Hello, so welcome back to another video and welcome to like a new series that I'm gonna do on my channel which has been like highly, highly requested since I did my glute series video shindig one thing i noticed was that i got a lot of questions dms comments and stuff from people that were literally just starting out in the gym and they were very very confused and overwhelmed by the amount of information in those videos and I feel like for some people it kind of put them off because everything just sounded way too confusing and way too just overwhelming so i knew that i wanted to do another series which isn't going to be like specifically glute related but just a more beginner friendly series about training the gym nutrition so yeah it's just going to be like a super super beginner friendly series of videos and i want to kick start it with a video on nutrition and just go over like the real basics like realistically what you need to know um, about nutrition if you're just starting out to make sure that you are eating in line with your goals so yeah with that being said if there is anything in particular that you would want to see in these videos and do let me know um, I'm filming this on Christmas Eve it's Christmas Eve today what a festive queen filming this video I really need to get a life but I'm doing this because I want to start posting these next week so like end of December start of Jan 21 because that is like the prime time as cliche as it sounds for people starting fitness journeys making changes new year's resolutions people wanting to get into the gym work on themselves so i hope that these videos can be useful for those people just as a useful place to start because like i said i know that some of the information i've given out previously is super overwhelming as much as i love going like in depth with like all the science stuff it is very very overwhelming and to be honest for the vast majority of people you don't you don't need that you know so the first thing i'm going to go into very quickly and this is basically the the real base um, of anything when it comes to nutrition when you're thinking about it is calories in calories out it is your energy balance so in short if you are consuming more than you are expending then you are going to gain weight if your consumption levels and your expenditure levels are equal you're going to maintain your weight and if your consumption levels are lower than your expenditure levels then you are going to lose weight so there you've got a calorie surplus you've got calorie maintenance and then you've got a calorie deficit which i'm sure is a word you have heard to death if you follow people like james smith and stuff on instagram so on one side you have your consumption which is going to be the calories what you're eating what you're drinking because yes drinks do also have calories in especially if you're having like the full sugar full fat like coke stuff like that like that has calories in so it's not liquid calories are not free calories they do still count so what you are consuming and on the other side you've got your expenditure so the things that are going to contribute to this would be your bmr which is your basal metabolic rate which is basically how many calories your body would burn if you were sitting around doing nothing the calories burnt from things like bodily functions this is going to be different for absolutely everyone and then you've got your energy expenditure from other things so like your neat your non-exercise activity thermogenesis i'm pretty sure i said that right so that's things like how many steps you're getting in daily how active you are do you have a sedentary office job where you sit down all day or are you a doctor or a nurse where you're running around all day your neat is going to be a lot higher than someone who for example has an office job a more sedentary lifestyle and then of course on top of that you've got any training you're doing any workouts you're doing they will also burn calories now something i get asked all the time and um, particularly from people that are going into a calorie deficit trying to lose weight trying to drop some body fat is do they eat back the calories burn the answer to this is no um, if you have used any kind of online um, calorie calculator anything like that you will notice that well any good one will ask you for things like age high weight and also your activity levels so how active you are are you more sedentary are you more active how many times are you training a week so when it gives you that calorie recommendation your energy expenditure is already taken into account so no you do not eat your calories back the other issue with um eating your calories back per se is you are never truly going to know how many calories you have burnt um I know that people have like fitbits and stuff that tell them they've burnt like 800 calories in a session those watches are great for so many things they are really not great for telling you how many calories you've burnt they are wildly wildly inaccurate and a lot of the time they vastly 
overestimate calories burnt rather than underestimating it so let's say you're in a fat loss phase you're trying to lose weight and you are eating back the calories that your fitbit or your apple watch or whatever is saying you've burnt the chances are you're going to end up not in a deficit because you will not have burnt the calories that your watch is telling you that you've burned so yeah any good calculator is going to take your expenditure into account so you do not need to eat those calories back but yeah just to summarize there in case it wasn't clear enough if you want to gain weight you want to be in a calorie surplus if you want to maintain your weight maybe do a little bit of body recomposition building a little bit of muscle losing a little bit of fat you're going to want to be at maintenance or a slight deficit um, you can also build muscle at maintenance so I know that some people want to gain weight and if you really do want to gain weight you're going to need to be in a surplus but I know that some people just want to build a little bit of muscle and that can be done at maintenance and then obviously if you are wanting to drop body fat lose weight you are going to need to be in a calorie deficit okay so then I'm going to move on to your macros now these are something that I just think get way <laughs> overstated all my coaching clients pretty much will have had drilled into their poor little brains um because i'm really i'm so annoying with it like i literally do drill it into people when i get questions about this is people place way too much emphasis on like the exact like macro splits um and i'm going to talk about macros now what they are so your macros are your protein your carbs and your fats Protein and carbs are four calories per one gram and fats are nine calories per one gram. So like bargain for money, protein and carbs, fats, it's a little bit higher, but you do still need them in your diet for like general health purposes. You do still need them. I wouldn't recommend cutting any of the macros out personally. But yeah, when it comes to macros, people tend to get super, super anal um, and caught up in the specific percentages the specific numbers like oh my god like i was five grams over on my fats and like 16 grams under on my carbs and i say to them did you still hit your calories did you still hit your protein and they say yeah and i say well then don't worry about it my advice would be when it comes to calories and macros in general is base of your nutrition the base of the changes you're going to make with your body are going to come from the base of that pyramid which is your calorie consumption how many calories you're eating so what i've just spoken about so whether you're in a surplus maintenance or a deficit then i would say prioritize your protein a couple of reasons for this if you are wanting to build muscle protein is really really important the recommendation for protein is 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight and that's always what i would recommend depending on the body weight if you are quite overweight i wouldn't say it's that important to make sure that you're in that range but protein is still going to be a super important part of your diet but like i've just said obviously if you're wanting to build muscle it's really important but also protein is like the most satiating so the most filling macronutrient so if you are in a dieting phase having that higher protein diet can be really really helpful because it just means your hunger levels are going to be lower which means it's easier to adhere to the calorie deficit which means you are going to get the results that you want because you can actually stick to what you are doing because you're not snacking all the time because you actually feel pretty full because you're having solid high protein quality meals yeah calories on the bottom then i would focus on the protein and then carbs and fats now it's important to make sure that you are getting both of these in my opinion i know that some people love the keto diet it's not something i recommend to people putting out any macro any food group unless you've got an allergy or like a personal belief like you're vegan or you're veggie it's just not something that i prescribe to like cutting out an entire food group just to lose weight it's just not something that i think is a good idea i feel like everything in moderation is key regardless of what your goals are so yeah you've got your calories and then you've got your protein and like i've just said carbs and fats i would pretty much just split it to your preference i've worked with a lot of women now and something i've noticed is the vast majority of people seem to have more of a carb preference naturally that's just what they tend to go towards it's the kind of foods that they tend to crave a little bit more they run better off it they feel more energized but i've definitely had some clients who prefer having a bit more of a moderate carb intake and a higher fat intake um they feel more energized that way they prefer it their body agrees with it better so definitely play around with that one but in terms of like being super super anal down to the like specific 
gram of carbs and fats and hitting that every day it's really really not that important just make sure that you are hitting your calories and focusing on getting enough protein in and I promise you, you will be okay. So in terms of how you are going to know how many calories you're consuming, how you're going to count your macros, the answer to this is tracking. Now tracking is a bit of a controversial topic at the moment because it's hard to find a middle ground in this debate which is where I feel like I sit. Tracking is not for everyone. Yeah, if you have a history of disordered eating or anything like that or you start tracking and you notice that you are picking up some really bad habits um, and getting into a disordered way of eating definitely tracking is not for everyone but for a lot of people it works so so well and for a lot of people it is really um, the only way that they are going to know exactly what they're putting into their body I don't personally believe that everyone should track every day of their life for the rest of their life. Trust me, after you've tracked pretty consistently for a couple of years, you are going to be able to eyeball food pretty well. My battery just died, love that for me. Sorry if the camera angle just changed, but yeah, it's not right for everyone and, you know, I'm not going to judge anyone who feels like it's not right for them personally, but also I don't think it's fair to judge people who do track and say that they have disordered eating or they're not healthy or they're being restrictive some people who track will do that but a lot of people that i know a lot of my friends track my clients track i track i'm not restricting i literally i eat pretty much whatever i want if i want it i'm gonna have it so yeah just a little rant about tracking there this is a bit controversial because everyone and their nan uses my fitness pal I cannot stand that app. I find it so confusing. It also just looks hideous. I'm a sucker for a bit of an aesthetic. Um, and I just think Lifesum is much, much nicer um, and easier to use. It's definitely more user friendly than MyFitnessPal in my personal opinion. But I know that some people love MyFitnessPal. So I would say try both, see which one you prefer. Lifesum or MyFitnessPal would be my recommendations for the app that you use to track your food. And a couple of notes on tracking because these are mistakes I see being made all the time. Um, say you're trying to lose weight and you are cooking with olive oil in every single meal. A spoon of olive oil is around 120 calories. People think that they don't need to track that. You do. If you're tracking and you're trying to count your calories, you need the, the oil counts towards your calories. I know it doesn't feel like it does because it's not filling you up in any way or making you feel any less hungry, but trust me, that needs tracking, that does add up. Um, and let's say you're cooking with olive oil three times a day, that's about 360 calories, which could very, very easily take you out of a deficit. So if you are going down the tracking road, make sure that you are tracking accurately another thing with tracking is to make sure that you are tracking things however you weigh them so let's say you have weighed some raw chicken and it was 120 grams when you put that into the tracker do not put that in as 120 grams of cooked chicken because it's not it's 120 grams of raw chicken whatever you weigh it as so let's say with rice as well let's say you weigh 60 grams of rice and then you cook it and you've put 60 grams of rice into Lifesum or my Fitness Pal, whatever app you're using, make sure that you've put 60 grams of dry rice, not cooked rice, because the calorie difference is, is pretty big. 60 grams of dry rice turns into about 100 and something grams of rice when it's cooked, which is like, there's a big difference. So just make sure that you are tracking things like that correctly. And then the last thing I just want to touch on is bulking and cutting because these are terms that everyone always asks me. They're like, I don't know whether to bulk first. I don't know whether to cut first. I don't know what I'm doing. Please help me. Um, so bulking and cutting kind of came from like bodybuilding. It's not something that every single person needs to do. If you just want to lose a little bit of weight, go into a deficit, technically a cut, lose the weight, pop yourself back up to maintenance, Bob's your uncle, fan is your aunt. You don't need to worry about doing like bulking and cutting because like I've said, you can build muscle at maintenance. So let's say you've lost the weight that you wanted to lose. Going back up to maintenance is going to allow you to build some muscle. So don't stress about bulking and cutting too much. It's not something that everyone needs to do. And also something that people never speak about is how mentally tough bulking is. Like seeing your body change because no matter how lean the bulk you are going to gain some body fat and it can be really really difficult um to deal with and for some people that mental 
challenge is just not worth it and that's completely fine like i say the bulking and cutting thing comes from bodybuilding it's not meant for the general population can the general population do it yes i do bulks and cut that's because i have like a real passion for it i would never compete or anything but i do just have that passion for like muscle growth and physique changes like i'm really really passionate about stuff like that but it's not necessary for everyone to go through these constant cycles of bulks and cuts bulks and cuts bulks and cuts so i just want to make that very clear before i get into it but bulking and cutting is pretty much all about calories in calories out so if you are in a cutting phase you are going to be in a calorie deficit which means you are consuming less than you are expending in a day if you are going into a bulk then it's literally the opposite you are consuming more than you're expending in a day or you're expending less than you are consuming in a day in terms of where to start if you are interested in cutting and bulking you would obviously do a cut if you want to lose weight if you want to drop body fat you would not go into a cut expecting to gain loads and loads of muscle now in a calorie deficit if you're a beginner and you're new to training you can build muscle someone came to me with like no weight loss goals whatsoever um, and they just wanted to build muscle i'd never put them in a calorie deficit because it's just not ideal for their goals and also it is essentially a controlled starvation of your body it's not something that you are going to want to be in forever it's hard it's not easy there are ways to make it easier um but it's not easy and it's not something that you're just going to slam everyone into especially if it's not in line with their goals but cutting if you are unhappy with your current body fat levels unhappy with your current weight a cut would be where you would want to start now if you're starting off quite small quite petite and you want to actually gain weight and gain like a significant amount of weight then a bulk may be the way to go you're not wanting to necessarily gain a load a load a load of weight but you are wanting to really try and build as much muscle as you possibly can and you're not bothered about gaining a little bit of body fat then you can also do a bulk just make sure it's a super super lean bulk so like 250 calories above maintenance should be okay for most people for that they're kind of like the two polar opposite ends but i do get a lot of people coming to me saying look i've got a little bit of fat that i want to lose i'm not super overweight i'm not super unhappy um but i have got a little bit of weight i want to lose but also i feel really skinny a little bit flat um, and i would also like to build some shape to my physique having worked with multiple women i would never suggest someone to someone who is unhappy with their current body fat levels go into a bulk and do that first because i've already spoken about how mentally tough it is anyway i genuinely believe if you are unhappy with where you are currently with your weight um, and your body fat levels just go into a deficit and get yourself down to a point that you are happy with now one thing i want to make very very clear here is you need to make sure that you are looking at this very objectively a lot of people women in particular are not happy with their body fat levels when they come to me for coaching for example and then they will upload their pictures and i will think looking at you there's not re realistically much body fat to lose there and that's where a conversation needs to come in between me and the client who has come to me wanting to work with me um to actually like go through their goals with a fine tooth comb and actually make make sense of where this whole i need to drop more body fat has come from i feel like women just get so used to seeing super lean physiques on like magazines in the media bikini competitions which feel like women kind of have warped views of what a good and healthy body fat level is but if you do feel kind of like skinny fat sort of thing i personally would also would always recommend just going into a slight deficit um and those people tend to be new to training as well so bingo you're in a perfect position just going to a slight deficit be able to drop some body fat and build some muscle at the same time which is actually how i started out i am going to do like a fitness journey video um i think i'm going to film it like after this one not right now because it's dark outside and this light is really washing me out um but yeah let me know what sort of stuff you want included in that fitness journey video basically just want to give you all the information you need like the necessary information i don't want to go too in depth with like sciencey stuff with this i did that with my glute series i love doing it but it's very very overwhelming if you are new to the gym and i don't mean that in a patronizing way i mean i've genuinely had messages since starting that series being like look i love the videos but like 
and I don't understand them. When I have a conversation with them, I realise actually it's kind of like basic level of information. Some people might think everyone knows that dirt. Not everyone does. And like having these videos, hopefully, where I'm going to give you like the basic level of information, beginner tips, beginner friendly advice is just going to make fitness more accessible to more people, which is what I'm all about. Obviously, I love helping women through my coaching, but I completely understand it's 105 pound a month. Not everyone can afford it. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm giving out as much good quality free of charge content as possible yeah let me know what other videos you want to see in this give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and um, subscribe if you want to and you haven't already and follow me on instagram as well i'm super super active on dms and stuff over there so if you ever have a question might take a little bit longer to get back to you at the moment because i've got three uni deadlines in january <laughs> But I will get back to you eventually um, and I'm really, really active on there. I don't always check YouTube comments because I get some really perverted people on here. So definitely message me on Instagram. You will get a quicker response. But yeah, I hope the video was useful and thanks for watching.